There's a bunch of different technical aspects I want to ask you about on the Cardano side. So first, maybe on the scaling side, what is Hydra? How, do, how does Hydra compare to other different ideas for scalability like rollups? Yeah. Main trade-offs with respect to security, UX, um, and anything else you want to you want to talk about? You have to have a little bit more energy, Lex. Come on. You know what I need? <laughs> I need that Coke machine that you mentioned, the the thing that converts water to water cocaine. Water to cocaine from Director Bullock. <laughs> we'll, we'll leave the, we'll leave this in, right? Yeah. Um, isomorphic <laughs> state channels. That's a that's a great topic, right? There's a, there's a word salad of cryptographic terms. Uh, whether Lightning Hydra rollups any of these things, really, what you're trying to do is say, okay, uh, if I do it on layer one, it's slow and expensive. What I'm going to do is batch something somehow, some way, and then do it in a different system where it's fast and cheap. And what I'm doing with that is I'm losing some of the security guarantees of the base layer and admitting a slight higher degree of dis uh, of centralization. But then I get super fast settlement, I get super low cost transactions, and potentially I may even be able to get distributed computing. Meaning that instead of having the smart contracts run in a replicated system, they can run on a single node like a stake pool and their stuff is different from the other guy's stuff. So you go from a, a system of, of capacity of whatever it is to a system of N for the totality of all the stake pools. So that, basically Hydra is just a, the next generation of that when you have the ability to tinker with the accounting model and the layer two solution is is co-designed with the layer one solution. So it's like what Lightning would have been had Lightning been co-developed when Bitcoin came out. There would have been special provisions made in Bitcoin specifically to accommodate Lightning and it would have made it very easy for you then to move inside the system, outside of the system and have security properties preserved mm -hmm. like availability, for example, or fraud resistance, say, oh, you can't steal the money or these types of things. Where things get really complex, and this is why Hydra's novel over Lightning, is when you wanna move beyond payments to state management. Okay, so payments are just, I wanna move between Alice to Bob as quickly as possible, as low cost as possible. So for example, um, I have a micro tipping application like change tip on Twitter or, you know, like a video, I'm watching YouTube video, like maybe this video in the future and people really like it and they click tip and you get five cents or something like that. Okay, so that's an example of a perfect payment application and that's great. But what happens when you actually have a rich smart contract like a DEX or, you know, you want to do a video game or something like that. You want to run that off chain, but then there's some reconciliation on chain that happens. So a state channel basically lets you do that, but it's a lot more complicated and there's a lot more to think about. So Hydra basically just has in its, its design a collection of ideas of how to do that. And the current paper is for a single head. The next thing you do is composition. Mm -hmm. So you go multiple heads and there's a routing protocol between them. And then eventually you create these tail protocols for when things get asynchronous. So instead of always being aligned and always being available, what happens if they die for a bit and then they come back. And you can create all kinds of guarantees that your funds won't be lost or locked forever or things like that. There's a failure recovery mode for this type of stuff. And basically the, the idea is leverage what Lightning has already achieved with Bitcoin, but then take advantage of the fact that you have a more expressive accounting model and a more expressive programming model so you can just physically do more and you can put more crypto inside that thing. Now contrast it with rollups, uh, really that is just saying, you're gonna take some thing, batch a bunch of transactions together and you're gonna generate a proof. And then what you can do is whenever you see some part of that history, you can check it against that proof that's rolled up. Uh, and there's closely related concept of recursive snarks that you'll see a lot. There's things like the MENA protocol or other things. And basically the idea is that whenever you see something, you can always generate two proofs an existential proof that the coins exist and a non-existence of a double spend. So you can always check those two properties. And the proof is verifiable in logarithmic time, ideally. So you can have giant amounts of data, but it's very small. The actual proof is concise, okay? So there's just different boats for different floats. Uh, the advantage of a layer two network where there's actual channels and there's interaction and there's service providers is the channels can eventually scale in the collection of things that they can do. And eventually they can become interoperability networks between cryptocurrencies. So at some point we could modify the bolt spec and make it somewhat interoperable with Hydra. 
And then what you could happen is you could use it as a bridge to actually do cross-chain traffic and send transactions between the systems. You don't really think about that too much when you're talking about rollups. That's more of optimizing what you have within the system. Within the chain. So yeah. what, what, can you can you elaborate how it's possible to do cross-chain uh, traffic? Well, you so, already have the intermediary. You have the channel operator, and you already have lightning switch. protocol, right? And you just build a DEX that runs within that system, and they can swap assets, or you can do wrapped assets. So, so you, it would you lock be like it. low cost. I guess you could just switch low. Uh, yeah, the same thing lets you batch things on one will let you batch the other. So if Lightning works on Bitcoin and Hydra works on Cardano, you can eventually bridge these two together and create a way of moving back and forth. And the same things that make transactions in and out of that network cheap will make creating wrapped assets cheap, uh, at least on the Bitcoin to Cardano side. You can't create assets on Bitcoin. Another flaw of Bitcoin that they've never fixed. <laughs> What's your thought about layer two technologies in general? Is there stuff you're excited about? We talked quite a bit about Lightning Network, Hydra, I mean, th these ideas. Do you think there'll be somebody that wins out or is this gonna be this kind of dynamic thing that we just keep building different ideas and they all interact with each other? Uh, it goes back to biology, that cell differentiation concept. Is you have to build specialized tissue to do things point of layer two is to extend the network. It's adding a foot, it's adding an arm, it's adding a brain, it's adding a heart, it's adding eyes, giving you additional senses, you have ears now. So when you add these layer two protocols, like Atala Prism is a perfect example of that. We don't have identity at the base layer of Cardano. It's a real bad deal to do that because then you know, China will come in or US will come in and tell you how to do that. Mm -hmm. What you do is you build a layer two protocol that's blockchain agnostic, and then the user can decide when and where they need an identity and then bring that identity into the system. And if you designed it right, when they bring it in, it's very easy, very fluid, and suddenly the experience enhances. Everything just gets better. Oh, wow, okay, now I can use all these regulated things. They go from gray to green in the app store. That's so cool. Or, oh, wow, now I can send to human readable addresses. Because if I have an identity and you have an identity, we can alias them with some namespace. And now I sent to Lex instead of uh, some you know horrible back 32 address structure. Okay, so that's that's really what you need to do with layer two is say, okay, each layer two protocol is meant to do something. Either it gives me payments or lower cost smart contracts or interoperability or identity. And then it's a marketplace. So you should have blockchain agnosticism with your layer two solutions. And so you can mix and match and choose whichever collection of services you need. And that's actually how IT works these days with microservices and these other things and cloud software. You know, you, every firm is an aggregation of dozens of providers and basically that composition of them is your software stack.